You're listening to Paisal, a true rom-com. I am your co-host Paige and this is the very lovely, wonderful... Jessel. <laughs> Isn't it funny how saying wonderful things about someone or lovely things or romantical things about someone can be super embarrassing or uncomfortable? Especially if you're using those things to introduce someone and you're basically giving up people... Uh, um, what's the... Pre- preconceived idea yeah for the record i'm just telling the audience or giving the audience a tiny bit of insight into how i feel about jessel but you didn't say that you didn't say i think i was stating my opinion as fact which a lot of people do that's true we're getting a little bit more conversational on this podcast which is something that i'm wanting i think i think it would be a little bit more interesting than something scripted i don't know what i'm talking about now we've been scripted No, never mind. I have no idea what's happening. I went off script in 2000. Anyway, just kidding. I don't think I was ever quite on script. Because we promised it at the end of the last episode, I realised we have to talk about some of the teething issues we experienced when we first moved in together. But I don't know about you, Jessel, but I don't want the whole thing to be negative. I want it to be light and funny and really just for us to chat a bit about some of the things that happened the first month we were together. So it wasn't quite straightforward, as with everything it seems, because after my last pet sitting gig, I stayed at your place for a little while, Mm -hmm. up the road from where we live now. Can you tell the audience a little bit about that situation? What do you mean? I guess the size of the place, how many people live there, etc. It's a two-story, what did you say, two-story? Yeah. Two-story townhouse, uh, three three bedrooms. Um, I think it would be okay for three people to stay in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it can get a bit crowded once you have more than that. When I stayed for those few weeks before we moved here, who was living at the place? Just my brother. That's what. That's the majority of how it's been. But that changes. Uh, not at the moment, but um, when there was international travel, my parents or most of the time my mom would be coming over to stay for maybe a month or so. And my dad would be coming over for maybe like a couple of weeks, but not, not as regularly as my mom. We had assumed that would be the situation still because when we ma- made the decision to move here, we didn't know that the borders would be closed Mm -hmm. (laughs) and amusingly there has just been one person living there this whole time for the first two years of us living here yes but I think it's still nice that we've been able to have our own space and have those first few years of living together more private it wouldn't quite be as private if we were living with your brother even though obviously we have separate bedrooms and stuff it's it's more the communal area where it can become like before before meeting you or before moving in together i would be predominantly downstairs in the living room and he'd be upstairs um so you can't really because we both use uh, because we both play video games and watch tv and stuff we can't both use the same tv so basically it would be both of us in two separate rooms doing similar things playing video games and watching movies and tv shows so the communal area is the issue yeah and it and when my parents are here that that also complicates it a bit more if they want to watch something on tv yeah it would be much easier now because now um because you can watch tv and i can still play video games because i have now they've added more options of how i can play video games before it was just the console and then on tv now i can it's a bit more portable yeah so that's a good thing well what were you talking about i'm just listening at this point it's lovely well what was your question i was just asking you to talk a bit about the situation there did that answer the question oh definitely okay also um the living together part separately or whatever my feel is an important part of the relationship from a from a culture where that is not the norm um uh, my that that train of thought is not really regarded 
Can you talk a bit more about that? Can you explain? Most most relationships in Indian cultures would be if it's an arranged marriage, you'd be set up with someone. You maybe go out for a couple of days um, or maybe in a year, but you're still living separately. Um, but once you say, oh, yeah, that, that person's, uh, I think I can live at uh, and get married to that person and then he and get, get engaged and then get married and then you live together that never made sense to me and i've seen instances where people find out that when you live with the person it's not the same thing as outside of uh, outside of living together definitely my family culture is very much the same so i'm also different to my family because so all of my siblings did essentially what you described. All of them got married, then they moved in together, then they had children. And at least on my mother's side of the family, that is what is done. And as far as I know, on that side of the family, I'm the only exception to that, which is just one of many ways I'm different to the rest of my family. And I think I still hold on to some of those sorts of fairly conservative values. And it can be difficult to pick apart what I feel I value versus what's going to be easier in terms of being in the family. I think with our relationship, you would have had some similar feelings or anxieties maybe. About what? Oh, maybe not. Well, I think an interesting question to ask you or to have you answer would be how much pressure do you personally feel to sacrifice your own values to fit in with the family values overall? Oh, boy. Or traditions? Or... Uh, it depends what traditions you're talking about because I, I don't think I value them. I respect it but a lot of the stuff i i don't i don't think i follow so i think so like culturally or because that what a lot of the values my parents have have led me here but not not all of them so i think that brings up an important distinction that i feel seems to be lost a bit in what i see in social media attitudes where it's okay to hold different values to value different things and it, there's some gray area and i know i have had considerable trouble in this area of respecting someone else's values that are different to my own versus standing up against values that discriminate or dehumanize it can be very difficult defining what's one or the other yeah i mean having people have their values come from very um, discriminatory sources it's it's difficult to change that those mindsets a lot of people hold those values close because of i guess it defines who they are and changing that would um and afraid if they change something might happen or something i don't know yeah well there would be some kind of loss of identity or trying yeah. to and loss of friends and stuff yeah definitely peer pressure that social pressure to conform to the cultural norms of a particular group yeah, that well, that's it's... very strong in a lot of a lot of different groups of people well, what's that term called? Dissociation? Dissociation. No, dissonance. Oh, um, like... Cognitive dis dissonance. Or... Cognitive dissonance? Yeah, cognitive dissonance. For the audience who might not know what cognitive dissonance is. The mental discomfort that results from holding two conflicting beliefs, values or attitudes. This con inconsistency between what people believe and how they behave motivates people to engage in actions that will help minimize feelings of discomfort. Yeah, that, that happens quite a bit. Uh, a lot of it can be unconsciously. They don't, the people don't um, know that's happening. Yeah, which allows it to continue. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would have happened to me at one stage. Probably. I don't know what about, but... Probably being sexist. Wow. Yeah. I can see what you're talking about. I think this goes for everything and we all have things that we don't recognise as problems, I think, until we are in a situation that shows us in the right way. A big wake-up moment for me in that respect was 
I had dedicated so much time and energy and really run myself down and sacrificed so much with volunteer work. Then I was in a few situations where people who had no idea about the sacrifices I had made indicated that I wasn't doing enough and that I should be doing more. What that did was it made me realise the unrealistic unrealistic expectations I had had on other people. I had been so focused on the parts of the world that I wanted to improve and my ideas about how that would happen. I became really unforgiving of anyone who I felt wasn't doing their part to make to make a positive change. In that area? Yeah. It did not cross my mind at all that some of these people may have been doing stuff in private or in a space where I couldn't observe it. It wasn't until someone placed that uninformed opinion on me that I realised, oh, they don't know my situation, which is what why they're essentially calling me out. I have been calling people out when really I don't know enough about their situation to do that. And do we want to bring it back? What are we bringing it back to? I don't know. We went quite a bit out of... Well, if we bring it back to moving in together yeah so you had been talking earlier in the episode about why you thought it was important you indicated that you see a different side or you learn someone you learn much more living with someone in a relationship and because it doesn't happen so regularly with within my social circle it was yeah it was a different sort of mentality just i think because of both of our nature We had put a lot of thought and planning in before we moved in together, trying to anticipate problems. And I know, although I hadn't yet been diagnosed with PTSD or complex PTSD, I was aware of situations I had been traumatised by in the past. There were certain things that... I tried to anticipate so that we didn't end up in a situation where you did something that reminded me of something traumatic in my past and then maybe we couldn't come back from that. Something I was worried about was because you'd been on your own for so long, I was worried about the the more nuanced things of caring for someone. That's why I prompted us to get a peace lily. That was before we moved in. Before we moved in together, a few months beforehand, all you had to do was pour a glass of water into it each week. Yeah. And you would send me pictures and it was just like a gentle... You hear what I said? No. And not miss. And not miss. When you pour it in. Are you making fun of how I spill stuff all the time? Yes. Okay, just checking. Yeah, peace, Lily. We put a fair amount of effort into working out what we needed to do to ensure that it was a safe, comfortable space for both of us to live in. I think we did very well at that. Something that is in the book. I think we've mentioned a few times in this podcast that my mental health deteriorates very quickly if I don't get good quality sleep. As it happens, Jessel is quite a snorer. Yeah, I I don't think I was a snorer before, but... um something changed yeah it must have been because i got hit in in the nose so many times while playing soccer um i think i have a deviated septum for people that don't know what that is is this part being not not in line anymore the bridge of the nose yeah i think it's a bridge or something and it just um reduces the amount of air you can breathe in hey get your own drinking some of jess's water because i don't have my own some you just you almost finished it so I think at night when it's in a certain, when I sleep in a certain position, breathing in through my nose, I think makes a noise. Yeah. I don't know because I have not seen it. I haven't done this, but what I assume is that it's like if you were sleeping next to a chainsaw that was on. Oh my God. Yeah. Look who's talking. Um, Yeah. So we, I got, um, first we had the Little the strips. strips that you can nasal strips you can put on top of you on, on the bridge of the nose that uh, tries to prop up uh, both nostrils that worked uh, really well yeah but i mean it was it was one use 
and I think expensive. Like over the yeah, course of the definitely expensive need. because I I bought a few packs because I didn't want you being the one that was completely paying for that. My nose. It's my sleep. You wouldn't have had to bother with that if you weren't with me. Or I could sleep on another bed. No. <laughs> Uh, so that nasal strip thing worked, but because it's a one-use thing, it, you would need one each night. And then I saw this thing when I was getting, I think it was from the same place I got the, what is it called? The ear earbuds? Oh, yeah, the ones. Because Adjustable earbuds. Have we covered on this podcast that I am extremely sensitive I don't know. I don't think it was in the books. I have very strong reactions to all of my senses. And I've recently found out that it's a bit of a family thing. So for me, what's relevant here is if I can't hear conversation or if there's a lot of background noise, a lot of clatter, and that's different to like a loud film where it's just the film or music that you, you're hearing. It's the chaotic noise, noise of crowds, things like that. I become really, really agitated. And for years, how I coped with that is through alcohol use because it would dull my senses, essentially. Of course, it had very damaging effects. Side effects. Yes. I think Jessel might have been the first person I really spoke to about those sorts of issues that I had. I think I felt quite embarrassed that I was sensitive. Well, actually, there were a few friends that knew about those things. There were a few few friends that knew that I would use bathroom breaks at book club and at trivia to get some quiet. <laughs> Most people just thought I needed to use the bathroom a lot. Jessel came up with a solution I somehow hadn't thought of. Yeah, I found these adjustable earbuds where it's very simple in, in how, how you use them. Um, there's like a, uh, it's like a earphone thing, but it has a slider where it blocks off the earbud so depending on how much sound you want to let in you can slide it up or down, up or down which i thought was pretty good uh, instead of just having earplugs if there was just a bit of background noise i could have it mostly open but in and it would just take the edge off if there was a lot of noise and i didn't have to speak or anything then i could just have them fully closed yeah and um you ended up losing the first pair i lost one because my bag wasn't closed properly one time. You lost one of it? Yeah. Or the whole thing? No one. So now you have three. Uh, so when I bought that one, the second pair, that I saw that they had the nose, um, it, I don't know what they're called, but it's like you insert it in and it um, widens the nostrils from the inside. So the same approach, really, or the, the same... But not a one-time use. Yeah, with the strips, it forced open from from the outside so it like pulled them open then this other device that you can just wash each day and keep reusing until i guess it falls apart or something goes in and pushes out so what well, would you call that vacuum versus uh, force i don't know no it's, it doesn't push out but it has like uh, prongs where the, uh, the when you push it in it uh, props up the nostrils so it doesn't really push it out uh, also, the, the nasal strips, because my uh, skin is so oily, the adhesive starts to disintegrate by the morning and it starts to loosen. So it would sort of come off. You would end up with all these little white heads, just like little bits of fat poking out of your nose, out of all the pores on your yeah. nose. It was no. so disgusting. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. Yeah, I think it's worth yeah. um, you're the You're the only one that knows. So Yeah, it's worked really well. And has been a very big part of me being able to sleep well and head towards better mental health. When we moved in together, we had to reestablish 
routines. We had had some sleepovers on, on work, work nights. So getting up and going to work the next day. So we had some idea about how our mornings might be. But having that every day, we were able to create something a bit more specific. Definitely that was good for me, getting that consistency because I wasn't actually able to have much of a morning routine as I was moving around for, I think, three and a half years. I was really happy about the idea of being able to have a similar bedtime and get up at a a similar time each day that is a very big contributor to good sleep hygiene which is essentially it's all the things within your control that you do to give your body the best chance to sleep and I don't think there's enough education about that because There are so many people with sleep problems who don't seem to understand the very simple stuff that they're doing wrong and how they are actually giving themselves sleep problems. Not everyone with sleep problems is responsible, but definitely a lot of people I've spoken with who have sleep issues have some really bad habits that keep it going. I think the final thing to talk about for the episode, just as a nice, nice final thing was the weekday morning routine we got into, which was, you know, we would get up and get ready for work. And then we would sit down together and watch something, something, mostly educational videos in the beginning (laughs) that has changed a bit. Yeah. We predominantly were watching TED talks for a while. I think just the timing was was right for being able to watch that and then head down to the bus stop and go to work. But then there were also a few different YouTube channels and more recently that has changed to really focus on watching Achievement Hunter videos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still look out for TED, TED Talks, but I haven't seen anything that was... Because we, when, initially when we, did the, when we were watching the TED Talks, there were... Not necessarily new ones, so we're watching older ones and stuff. So now I, I keep an eye out for anything that's interesting. And the TEDx talks are so many. I don't know. There are multiple talks released every day. The talks don't mean what they used to because there are so many. I mean, it, it it's not that. It's difficult to go through and see which one you want because there's so many. There's no easy way of go, um, sifting through the options on, on YouTube. So still keep an eye on it. But generally speaking, we watch Achievement Hunter videos. It's, it's good to have something fun to watch or lighthearted, I would say. Sometimes it's watching their podcast or a lot of times it has been watching them play Minecraft mods. Mm which has been super entertaining and I have really loved getting into that. Watching, you mean? Yeah, I will say I have actually have no interest in learning how to play Minecraft myself, but I love watching other people play it. Similarly, I quite enjoy watching Jessel play Flight Simulator and fly over places, but I have... And crash. I love it when he crashes, but I have no desire to have that controller in my hand. I don't like that at all. Happy to sit at a desk for hours editing podcast audio, but uh, Xbox controller, no thank you. You held that, that new one, right? Yeah. We also started a tradition and then abandoned it after a while. I mean, you would be asleep by the time I even go halfway through. Maybe we should say what it is before you... Yeah, but you say that with no context. Yeah, you can say it then. In the evenings, Jessel would read from Lord of the Rings. Well, we started with The Hobbit. Oh, yeah. We got through The Hobbit and the first Lord of the Rings book. Yes. Or are we still in the Uh, first? We we finished the first one. I think so. It's been a while since since we did that because we kind of have a different. We have a different evening routine now. I loved listening to Jessel read, but I also found it 
very relaxing. So I never heard the last sentence or two that he said. I don't know how long last. he kept reading. I, I was asleep. How would I know? All I'm saying is at some point while you're reading, I stopped being aware because I was asleep. Yeah, which is probably uh, much earlier than you think. Um, but yeah, sometimes I have heard you breathing heavy, which not, lets me know that you are not listening and I'm just reading to myself. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, the routine is you go get ready for bed. I play something for an hour. A video game. Yeah. And then I get ready for bed. And I sort of half groggily wake up and I'm like, hey, and I reach out to you and then I fall asleep again. Not yet. Good times. In the next episode, we'll probably cover some of the family events that we went to, the first family events that we went to, one of them quite unexpected, one where Jessel introduced me to a lot of family and that was very overwhelming for me and one where I introduced Jessel to a lot of family and it was probably a bit overwhelming. Yeah, I mean... But that's for the next episode. Yeah, okay. If you kept listening this whole time, thanks for listening. You've been listening to Paisal, a true rom-com. Thanks for listening. There's a lot of listening. Please remember to share and subscribe.